Welcome to the Weather Insights Podcast Briefing. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney with meteorologist Jeff Lindner. This is Saturday, September 21st, and we have a little more activity overnight now. We have disturbance there in the uh, southern Atlantic. We have disturbance number one, still with a 10% chance of development. That's what's left of Gordon. It seems to uh, keep sticking around, looking very ugly on satellite. We'll take a look at that in a second. But a little more interesting is disturbance two. Surprisingly, a low chance of development on infrared. This is starting to show some pretty good convection and looking like there could be a low form in there. And then disturbance four, this is the latest one with a 30% chance of development. And this could be the beginning of what we start to see uh, coming off of the West Coast of Africa, Jeff, what we kind of expected all year, but maybe it's going to happen more in the later part of the hurricane season where these lows are, or these waves are coming off of Africa and developing into uh, a better, more favorable environment. And then, of course, the one that we're most interested in and been talking about now for a while is disturbance number three. Now up to 60% chance of development in the next seven days. The GFS, uh, the two models are uh, in a little bit more of an agreement now. The euro is still off to the left a little bit um, and the GFS a little bit more to the right and north looking seven days out. So uh, those are deterministic, but uh, I know you're, you're going to cover the ensembles on those in just a minute. And you see the convection there in the Western Caribbean um, a little more, I think, than we've seen recently so there is it's not necessarily getting a little more organized but just a little bit more active i would say in the western caribbean but this will likely be becoming a tropical cyclone of some sort in the gulf of mexico next week jeff <clears throat> yep so here we go we we've been talking about this uh for a while and we, we we've been saying it's going to be slow it's going to be slow to develop and it's certainly going to be slow to develop uh you know nothing's going to happen this weekend down in here it's really the middle of the week where we may see something finally get together here either in the western caribbean or the southern gulf of mexico here's that uh disturbance here air of low pressure oh 700 miles southeast bermuda fairly impressive convective blow up with this so this could potentially get a name here if it if it's able to hold on here and, and do something. So uh, we'll have to see. And then this is the kind of wave that's coming off the coast of Africa that the Hurricane Center is showing that development potential out here. And actually, the models are are uh, fairly aggressive with this wave coming off the coast of Africa. It's getting late in the year for this type of development out here, but uh, I wouldn't say the season has gone overly uh, well planned. So, you know, who knows? We'll keep an eye on everything and we'll take a look. Here's the signal. So these are the ensemble members for next Friday morning, uh, September 27th. Uh, this is the European. So you can see the Gulf of Mexico kind of bullseye we've been talking about. You can see some members are faster. They're already up towards the U.S. Gulf Coast. Yeah. by Friday morning, but there's a decent cluster here in the South Central Gulf of Mexico. And you can see this, there's a signal also here uh, with this wave coming off the coast of Africa. Um, and so we have some uh, agreement also with the, with the ensemble members, the GFS, somewhat similar, a little bit faster though, by Friday morning, mm -hmm. a lot more members approaching the U.S. Uh, Gulf Coast or the Florida West Coast here. So mm -hmm. again, the signal continues to be here. Good signals out here in the Atlantic also. And then the Canadian uh, showing somewhat similar. I mean, all three of these big yeah. models, the European, the GFS, the Canadian, and their ensembles are all kind of in agreement here that there's going to be some sort of something mm -hmm. uh, in the South Central, Central, or Northeast Gulf of Mexico as we get towards uh, late next week. And so, you know, again, the questions continue to be, where exactly does low pressure form? Does it form down here off the northern coast of Honduras? Does it form over here off the southern coast of Cuba? Does it form off the eastern coast of the Yucatan? Does it form up here on the northern coast of the Yucatan? All of that probably doesn't make a lot of difference in the eventual track of this. It's going to meander off to the northwest and the west-northwest. And then it's eventually going to probably turn to the north and maybe even the north-northeast. But we'll take a look at the steering flow here. And so this is for Wednesday evening. You can see our system potentially down here somewhere around uh western cuba northern yucatan somewhere in this area so here's our system you can see there's high pressure over here towards florida just a little bit east of florida ridging up here to the north and then we have this really big trough coming down into the great lakes 
uh, and even down here into the southern, southern plains of Texas. And so the, the flow here on the west side of this high is going to be off to the north. And the flow here across the Gulf Coast states is going to be off to the northeast. And so you can imagine the steering here is slow off to the north. And then as it comes up to the U.S. Gulf Coast, potentially turning a little bit more toward the right. Mm. But let's go forward in time. This is Thursday morning. Here's our tropical system. Ridge of high pressure backs a little bit away now. Yeah. So this is kind of opening the door here for this to come up to the north. The trough continues here. Again, this is going to push anything that tries to come up toward it off to the east. So again, Louisiana over to the Florida Panhandle. This is sort of coming up in your general direction. And as we go forward to Thursday evening, notice the high pressure continues here in Florida. So kind of Florida is likely going to be on the edge of this. But notice this low, this trough here across the southern U.S. kind of cuts off. You know, yeah. you can see a complete circle mm -hmm. here. So this becomes a cutoff low. And this is going to want to pull this system almost due north. It looks yeah. like you can see here on the, the European, it almost looks like it's starting to <laughs> capture this and bring it northward. And if that's the case, you could even see a little bit of a bend back turn to the left. Um, we'll just have to see there's that, you know, if this is a little bit further to the east and the ridge is a little bit further to the east, this opens up uh, possibly for this to get up here into the southeast United States. If this high is a little bit further west, the upper low is a little bit further west. Hey, Louisiana, southeast Louisiana, Mississippi, you're probably more in the bullseye here. And so there's still a lot of uncertainty. And again, is the system over here in the southern Gulf of Mexico? Is it over here in the southeast Gulf of Mexico? Where exactly it develops also plays into this. And so, you know, that's why we're we're always relatively uncertain at this time frame of, of the ultimate track scenario here um, because of where the system may develop in this fairly complex steering. And this is what you get into as you start to get into the fall months, you know, especially October, you get into these really complex setups where you have movements of troughs across the United States, cold fronts coming down. You can see the trough up here exiting off New England, but it's leaving behind the piece of it turning into a cutoff low in the Southern Plains. You know, you don't see that type of stuff usually in the summertime. And so right. you, you start to get into these patterns where you can get some really weird tracks. You know, this thing could come up toward the coast and slow down, uh, potentially even stall or do some sort of a loop up here along the yeah. Gulf Coast. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of different things um, that can still play out again. We're still talking six or seven days out for any potential impacts probably on the U.S. Gulf Coast, you know, I, I won't say Texas is completely 100 percent in the clear, but this sort of pattern here is not favorable at all for any sort of tropical system to come northwest toward the Texas coast. You know, with this upper low here, that's going to kind of in the high here, it's going to direct it more to the north and the northeast. So it'd be very difficult, at least with this steering pattern in place, to get something over toward uh, the Texas and upper Texas coast. Interestingly enough, it looks like another tropical yeah. system possibly uh, in the Eastern Pacific. And you got to keep an eye on these this time of year as they potentially come up and get in, interact with these troughs that can pull back Northeast right. across Texas from the Pacific side. And we can get some good, good range for that. So we'll, mm -hmm. we'll see, you know, I think the, the other thing minus the tropics, this looks like a breakdown finally in the upper pattern of this heat that yeah. we've been dealing with. I mean, I don't know what the high was yesterday, but I know Thursday was 98 yeah. Um, which is getting stupid ridiculous for late September. And so I know we're all we're all about done with it. And this pattern is certainly kind of break that down. This would probably put a front uh, pretty close, if not through here uh, late this week. So a lot happening and, and finally some changes maybe locally that we can get out of this heat. Maybe we need some rain, too. Yeah, yeah, we do. And uh, hopefully, yeah, that ridging will break down. But for the next few days, we're still looking at mid 90s, uh, triple digit heat indexes, at least in Texas. And yeah, that Central American gyre, uh, as you pointed out there in the Pacific, um, in, anywhere in where that Central American gyre is can spin off systems. This is a good example, uh, seeing one possibly in the Gulf and then one in the Pacific as well. But uh, yeah, as you pointed out, it seems like with each update, Texas is less likely of a target. And what we were thinking the next storm would be uh, Helene there in the Caribbean may, may be, actually be Isaac if one of these other storms um, quickly develops out in the Atlantic. So it'll be interesting to see what name it actually gets over the next seven or over the next several days. And uh, of course, with everything changing so quickly, you want to keep up to date with the the latest and reliable weather information. You can do that right here 
on weather insights, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on your notifications. Jeff, thank you very much.